<laughs> Monkey! What's up, everybody? Today is a very ill-fated day in Revival House BTM podcast history. For today, I have to watch Monkey Shot. Monkey fucking shot, the greatest movie ever made. Fuck this movie. Greatest monkey movie ever made. It's, uh, you think Dustin Jackson might be the best? This one's the best, baby. You remember that movie, uh, Ed, with Matt LeBlanc? <laughs> yeah, he played baseball or something. <laughs> Yeah, and it was just a it was just a midget in a costume. What was the other one called? It was like called Funky Monkey, and the monkey like danced or something. I don't know. You remember Monkey Trouble with Harvey Keitel? Oh yeah, that had a capucci, like a spider looking monkey. It was it, what was the fucking monkey movie with what's his name? Ah, uh, fucking make my day. Oh, any which way but loose. Yeah, and and its sequel. Clint Eastwood. Mm-hmm. So basically what we're doing, I think, I think what Zach's trying to do here is list a bajillion monkey movies that are better than this one. I think that's what he's trying to do. None of those movies feature a guy breaking a monkey's neck with his fucking mouth. So no. Wait, we could have did Outbreak. Outbreak with Dustin Hoffman. There's a million movies that are better than this one. It's not exactly my favorite subgenre of film, the primate subgenre um, <laughs> with humans. But anyway, I don't really want to waste too much time like talking before we start this movie because as Zach let us all know, uh, well actually let me know before we start recording, this fucking movie is an hour and 53 minutes and 16 seconds. Almost two hours of fucking monkey greatness. <sighs> it's fucking horrible, man. So let's not waste any time. Uh, we'll start it and we'll keep ranting. Uh, we're watching it on Amazon Prime, by the way. Uh, we, I don't own it. And we had to do it because people started saying, we give us fucking monkey shines now. And and we got some requests for it, uh, especially with the last episode where... And they weren't doing it to troll you at all. Yeah, I'm sure they did. That's all right. Uh, I'm happy to do it. We're happy to entertain as usual. We're on Amazon Prime, so follow along there. There's no way I'd ever own this fucking movie, so I'm glad it's streaming. And we're going to do a three, a two... A one, a play. A two. All right, Metro Goldwyn Meyer. That's a fucking tiger. It's a lion. You always call it a fucking tiger. <laughs> always. Like, Zach doesn't remember elementary school. He doesn't remember kindergarten. I'm actually doing it to quote a line from Kong Pao. But you'd know that if you oh, watched okay. it. Oh, Orion. I always called it Orion as a kid. Yeah. It just looks like Orion. Why would you think that says Orion? That's not how you spell Ryan. That's how you spell Orion, as in the uh, constellation. Yeah, it is. You're dumb at. Once again. <laughs> Fuck that constellation. This constellation shit is bullshit. Like, this fucking astrology bullshit. But let's leave it behind. Orion doesn't exist. Fuck you. That's stupid shit. Charles Evan. Would you fuck Charles Evan, though? Uh, absolutely not. You know what? I'm having a little bit of a dilemma right now, because... I'm trying to turn this fucking movie down within Amazon because I really don't... I gotta watch it. That's enough. I don't really want to hear it. And uh, I can't. I'm having a... It's like the Amazon is all the way down. And I can hear way too much of it. Really? That's all right. I'll deal with it. Monkey shines. So not George Romero's finest hour. Uh, He didn't have that many fine hours. Best fucking movie he ever made. And what a title sequence. They showed the fucking monkey's face. That's great. Yeah. So, so we're getting ready to meet our star, fucking the guy that played, uh, you know, Superman. And he gets fucking fucked up and has to be in a wheelchair the whole movie. Superman? What? Shut the, shut the fuck up. Oh, well, I thought it was the Reeves in this movie. You know, not the Reeves, but, you know, the other Reeves. What made you think that? Because he was crippled? Yeah. Are you just being funny? Dude, his wife's hot, though. Best part about the movie. They're going to earn themselves half a star. I could see some side tit. Side titty, side butt too. Oh man, he's got he's cupping that ass. I would fucking lick up and down that ass. 
I would eat that ass, though. I've seen this movie once, and it was just pure agony, so I've never seen it again. Now... Oh, look at that. Look at that bod. Oh, fuck yeah. He's crippled right now throughout the whole movie, right? No, he gets in a car accident or something. Okay, so he's going to get crippled. Yeah. All right. You know what's funny is... uh. You you made a joke. Stephen Root's in this, and Stanley Tucci, of course. I know he's in it. Stephen Root, who plays uh, Bill Dotrieve. Yeah. In the, uh, Bill Dotrieve, yeah. And the fucking stapler guy from the Office stapler, Space. Yeah. Boo as Ella. He's in a lot of stuff. He's also on news radio. I read this is the first movie, one of the only times in movie history where they got a male monkey to be in a movie. They usually get female monkeys. Probably because they're afraid the male monkeys are going to jack off in their hand and throw it at the actors. Mm. Which is fucking cool. So they didn't care about that here. They, see, they were breaking new grounds. They were like, you know, they might fucking throw their jizz at you, but it's okay. And, and he's playing a girl monkey, so you think they would have just got a girl monkey. They're going to have to shoot around the cock. Unless he was neutered or something. Did you see that? Fucking Tom Savini did the effects. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> Cletus Anderson, that's a good guy. He's got a good name. Okay, he's not in a car accident. He's in a, a, a freak jogging accident. <laughs> Looks like he's got braces on his feet. Run, Forrest! Oh, shit! It's all the dogs. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Why is there bricks? Dramatic much? Why is God. there bricks? I don't know. But he, he had bricks in his backpack. Maybe. The car was made of bricks. He had the bricks to weigh him down. He's one of those guys. Wants to strengthen his back muscles. What happened to the guy driving the car? Did he just hit and run? Oh, he got fucked up. There's a Stanley Tucci right there. Would you suck Stanley Tucci's car? Uh, you know what? Uh, which era of Stanley Tucci are we talking about? Are we talking about um, the Devil's Prada? Stanley Tucci, or are we talking about Prime Tucci, Beethoven? Fucking, uh, we're, we're talking Jury Duty Tucci. Oh, that's right, he's in that too. Stanley Tucci, he's one of those actors where he was underrated for a very long time, and I still think he kind of is, but like, he was in a lot of shitty movies, but he's a great actor. Like you said, Jury Duty, right? Mm -hmm. But he's actually a really good actor, and he was in Beethoven, which I, I love Beethoven. He's one of the grunts, the hired goons. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a bone. I'll give you a bone. He has the high pitched scream. We should do Beethoven. Beethoven, I like to call it. Beethoven, yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of Bill and Ted, they. I guess did you guys read that article that I had sent you? Where I don't know what the fuck. The Reeves sort of insinuates that it's not a done deal. Did he? Did he imply, or are they just jumping to conclusions for a headline? I I, I read the actual quote, and it did kind of seem unsure. Ah, yeah. Did you not read the quote? That sucks if it doesn't happen. I mean, I don't know why he would word it the way he worded it if it was 100% now. He's the fucking one. He was playing mind games with us. I'm going to... Oh, God. I just pulled up our chat to see if I can find the link again. And um, I opened it right as... Is that Josh James that sent me a picture of an asshole? Is it? What is that? What is that picture he sent? Is it nice and tight? Look at it. You're in the chat too. Is that an asshole or is that like a wound that looks like an asshole? Look at it. Oh, look. I'm fucking disturbed. Oh, it's uh, it's from Rabid. Oh. <laughs> look like an asshole. She's got the fucking weird pussy on her armpit with the little phallic thing that comes out and sucks people's blood. That's a weird fucking movie. Set or third or fourth movie they showed on Joe Bob. If anybody watched, hope you, hopefully you did. I want to talk about Joe Bob, but before we do that, I want to read this Reeves quote for you before we uh, move forward. He says this, and I don't know why he would say this if if it was like a hundred percent a go. You'd be like, oh well, it's happened, and I can't wait, you know. Um, so let me read this for you. The Reeves quotes as saying. I don't know if it's a reality. We've been trying for a long time to get that film made, and it still has its challenges. I really love the characters, and I think we have a good story to tell. Part of it is show business stuff, financing, rights, deals. It's nothing creatively. So he doesn't sound super... He, he sounds like uh, he's ready for it to collapse at any time, you know? Fuck. 
it's just one of those things where maybe he's a jaded, maybe since this movie's been kicked back and forth for years now that he wouldn't be surprised, you know, if it just something just fucking pulled the rug underneath it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, since, uh, hopefully that fucking works out, baby. Cause I, I got a boner for the bill and Ted. I want to fuck bill and Ted in the ass while the babes watching Jack off. You know, you also mentioned too, I hate that we uh, moved on from it, but Joe Bob, that's a pretty big thing because that's pretty fresh. I think he wrapped up his shutter marathon yesterday uh, and that, let's say it didn't go off without a total hitch, right? It For the first fucking movie, it was uh, the the launch of uh, Friday the 13th game all over again. The servers were exploding at shutter. It was nuts. And, and fan, I guess... I guess they underestimated the outpour and the uh, the demand for it. And why do they keep doing that? I kind of underestimated it too. I guess you know, to be honest with you. But you would have think, well, maybe they couldn't have gauged the number of subs they were getting because I bet you a lot of people did the sub like right when they were ready to watch it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they didn't have a lot of people subbing, so they they couldn't really count. I'm not sure, but it was a disaster. Um, and it, to make it worse. You could only watch it via the actual Shutter TV on the website. I guess maybe with their apps. I have Shutter through Amazon, and and people like me were fucked. And you would have known you couldn't have used that if you would have been following their Facebook, baby. Yeah, it, well, it's it's fucking. St- it's still. I had it previously though. There's no reason to even get it through there, really, unless you don't, unless you can't get the app because they don't even have all the movies that they have on Shutter on Amazon. So when I first got, I was like, "You only got the, all the fucking movies." Fuck this. Is it really? Yeah. I didn't realize it was shortened on Amazon. It is for some reason. Well, so here's the thing: that I would just have the straight Shutter app if they had an app that was for everything, every device. They don't. I don't watch shit on my PC. Mm-hmm. Like I work on my PC, right? So it's like when I'm not working, I, last thing I want to do is sit my ass in my office on a computer. I don't want to do it. So they need to get with the times and either get a PlayStation 4 app or a Samsung app because I watch all my apps and my streaming services via my TV. Or I could do PS4 if they really had it, but they don't. Or you get a Roku streaming stick for like 30 bucks or whatever it is. Why would I do that? I have all these other fucking devices that should do it. Why would I do that? doesn't make any because sense. Because the fucking smart TVs aren't supported very long. As soon as they put out a new model, they stop supporting the old one, it seems like. Like mine doesn't get supported anyway. I mean, well, in that case, hey, this is Ira from Mad About You. Remember him? Remember that show? Mm-hmm. That's who it looks like. Yeah, I think it's Ira. That's him. But yeah, man, it's. I just think it's bogus. And I, I was Googling, you know, the status on any, because surely they have to have a PlayStation 4 app at least. And they announced that they had one in development, and that was two years ago. And it's funny because they still have that tweet up and people are still blowing up that feed on that that tweet, like retweet two years later. Like, hey, where the fuck is it? Where the fuck is it? Mm-hmm. And um, how long does it take to make an app? Apparently two years. No, it doesn't. So I, I think, I don't know. Oh, you going to go make it for him? Can you do it any faster, bitch? Recognize. I just think that uh, if they want to advance and grow to the next level, they need to start acting like it. They need to start getting with the times. With how big that was, though, they have to be like considering like Joe Bob. Come on, once a year, let's do it. Or if they were smart, they do it like, like so that people don't just get it once a year and then get rid of it. Like record another season and then play it. Like put out a new episode every week throughout the year, you know, that would keep people like subscribed. I would actually rather that that would be cool. I'm, I'm typically a guy that loves to binge, um, mm-hmm. but this isn't like a series, you know, it's just individual movies. So for something like this, I would actually be all for it if they just recorded another marathon and released even one a month. Right. Do 12. Mm, I'd, I'd even be for them adding more Joe Bob. Like that's kind of the only reason we watch now. We're not really watching for the movie. So put some more Joe Bob in there. Some more breaks. Well, as Joe Bob even said, you know, every movie that they showed was already on shutter. You can watch it without the Joe Bob commentary. Mm-hmm. Right. So they didn't. Um, and they probably handpicked ones that they knew they were going to have the rights for, for a long time too. You're probably right too. Well, and, 
the the list itself was just as I predicted. I mean, they played it safe. It's cool too because AMC owns Shutter, and AMC's always showing all the Halloween movies around Halloween. So yeah, you think like they could definitely do a Halloween marathon with Joe Bob sometime. Well, they played it safe, um, but not safe is like. I mean, they didn't show anything mainstream, but if you're a horror nerd, they did. They showed they showed like Hellraiser. That's that's the closest one, and that's even kind of on the cusp. That's the closest one to being anything mainstream, but yeah, I I, I don't know, but to if you're a horror fan, they're pretty much classics that aren't. They're kind of predictable. I mean, Reanimator. I was like, after they they showed uh, Hellraiser, and it's like, okay, we got one left. I'm pretty sure it'll probably be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But then he came back on. He's like, we can't end it with Hellraiser. That's too easy. We got to go deep dive. We got to deep dive again. Get some greasy shit. And I was fine with that. Even though I'd have loved to hear his commentary on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So if you're a casual person, I mean, if you're just a kid growing up getting into horror, it's perfect. Like, I would recommend just go watch that Joe Bob marathon. If you're like some 10, 11, 12 year old, just kind of getting your uh, your teeth cut on it, because it's going to have all these movies that you've probably never seen before, and they're going to be awesome. But if you're any kind of fan of horror, they're tried and true classics. It was nothing too adventurous. I mean, there was three I'd never seen. Yeah, I'd seen most of them, too. I mean, you have Basket Case, Reanimator. These are staples. I mean, even Hellraiser. Um, what am I forgetting? Taurus Trap. I have that on Blu-ray. That's. I mean, that's like I said, these these aren't mainstream movies by any, you know, rabid, rabid, the prowler. See, I've never seen the prowler. Mm. I never seen daughters of darkness or whatever. I have never seen demons yet, which you're always telling me to watch it. That's a great movie. You're going to love it. I promise, baby. It's got some of the best gross out gore. That's the soundtrack. You're going to love it. It's awesome. I've watched a few of them as far as the Joe Bob ones. I watched the Reanimator, uh, Reanimator one yesterday while it was actually streaming. Sleepaway Camp was on there, too. Oh, and that's another one, too. Like I said, not exactly a commercial movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it's one that every horror buff's seen a million times. But uh, it was great. I watched I watched uh, Sleepaway Camp on my phone. I buckled down. I was laying in bed because I refused to watch shit on my phone. And I watched it on my phone. It was It was a lot of fun, but... The next morning, I watched um, Reanimator in my office, and because I was doing stuff in there anyway, and I watched a bit of Taurus Trap because now it's all archived. That's that's another it's thing. It's all there for you to watch now, baby. They fucked up royally. They dropped the ball, but they they made up for it pretty quick. I mean, the damage control is pretty good. Yeah, they originally were going to whenever it was just the first movie that fucked up. They basically said, okay, we're putting that first movie up right now so you can watch it on demand. And the rest of the, the marathon will continue as planned. But then since, like, the fucking apps were still kind of fucking up. Like, I, I pretty much missed the intro to every movie. Because the apps kept fucking dropping, the ch- like, out of the channel. And then I'd have to go back. And so, yeah, they, they put them up quicker than they were planning to. Yeah, the thing is, is uh, for you... The first movie was the big fuck up. I don't know if anybody saw Taurus Trap. I was lucky. Somehow I got into Taurus Trap and watched the whole movie. But a lot of people weren't able to. I missed the intro of Taurus Trap, though. Uh, but for me, I was struggling a lot. Like, I know a lot of people that kind of miss the intros on every movie because every time a movie start, you know, ended, it kind of like got the circle of death and they'd have to reboot every, you know, restart. Yeah, I did. I did. See, that's bullshit, man. But the phone app worked better. So I guess if you were going to get a streaming like app for your TV, it'd be fucking like Apple for that for that app anyway. Anyway, I hope they take this as a sign. Hopefully, um, I-, I was concerned that with them fucking this up royally, obviously it was a thing to pull in new viewers. And for them to mess it up so badly, you know, people were probably <laughs> unsubscribing from their... Uh, free trial like immediately you know uh, you can't really unsubscribe from the free trial you still get it but you just won't no collect. yeah that's what I'm saying no no if you sign up you free trial you're good for seven days regardless but I could see a lot of people at that moment be like well if I'm not watching this movie right now I, you know I'm gonna go ahead and unsubscribe so I'm not billed in seven days mm-hmm. um, type of thing but I think 
damage control wise, they had Joe Bob working that shit on social media on his Facebook, kind of giving. He was kind of retweeting people that were pissed off, so he's kind of throwing shade too. It's pretty funny. Like Shutter, what the fuck? Fuck you! He'd be retweeting them. Yeah, it is. It was kind of bullshit, but like I said, like you said, with them um, going from hey, we're gonna archive tour tracks. We know a lot of people miss that. Then it became hey, these are all gonna get archived starting next week, and that that became they're all gonna be archived the second the marathon's over. Yeah. And I don't even know if they really announced that. I think you just told me that. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, they're all up. Yeah, I noticed that. So, And then Joe Bob himself had it on his own website, a t-shirt giveaway. And all the fans went there right after the marathon was over and crashed his website, too. So, yeah, man, I, I don't know. Don't underestimate the Joe Bob fans. That's Steven Root. Mm-hmm. You guys notice that we're not really talking about this piece of shit movie? This is what you get. This movie's fucking great. It's what you get by making us watch it. So, I'm heavily inspired by the most recent Mac and Zach episode, which you guys did Jason X, and you guys invited me to do it, but I've already we already recorded that for this channel, and I, I've watched it five too many times in my life. But uh, you guys did the same thing, man. You're like, we're not fucking talking about this shitty movie. <laughs> we were on the phone the most of the time. That was weird, having these personal-ass conversations. <laughs> Talking about Philip, you guys don't know who that is. No, I don't fucking. Know. That was genius. I figured, who gives a fuck? And then fucking. I, I know Mac hates it when I call him by his real name. I'm gonna have to censor that. It's continuity. Why? It's a it's a oh. run on joke that we have. Okay. Well, Mac, the fact that he did his classic thing where he disappeared for like 30 minutes again. <laughs> He just doesn't come back. But I always fucking, I always get worried when he does that. I'm always like, oh, I got to be funny. Hurry up. Find something to do. <laughs> you were like, I wonder if he's sleeping. Hope he didn't f- go somewhere and lay down and actually fall asleep. And you called him and that motherfucker's making pizza rolls. <laughs> like, this is how professional that guy is. He walks away and he doesn't even tell anybody to make it. He's going to cook dinner. And it wasn't even like he was making pizza rolls. If he was microwaving them at least. He heated him back in like just a few minutes. He must have been preheating the fucking oven, you know, laying out sheet trays and doing it like that or something because he was gone a long time. I think he looks at it like, oh, the longer I'm not here, the less I got to talk. He's one of those guys. Yeah, but that's not doing a commentary. Yeah, he's leaving me in the fire to burn alone. Yeah, that's horrible. I feel like Garth when he walks off. These aren't your real friends, Zach. I'm your real friend. (laughs) I love you. Now you know who your real friends are. Look, he's got to control his computer with a straw. That's awesome. We're going to watch this motherfucker sit in a chair for two hours. It's the greatest thing ever. So instead of a dog, they gave him a monkey. Why did they give him a monkey? A killing monkey at that. I guess because a dog or a a monkey can sneak through windows easier. It's not as loud, maybe, because this monkey's going to have to leave the house a couple times and kill people. They made the right choice. I just don't know about the, you know, the fleeing jizz, especially if he's confined in that chair. That monkey could just jump up in his face and and rub his jizz in the guy's face, like, like uh, whenever you're, like during the winter, whenever somebody puts your face in the snow, the monkey could do that. Look at that piece of shit car. They, that sh- that should have been a kill. Actually, the monkey just jizzes in his hand and then drowns somebody See- with it. Is there even a kill in this movie? I can't remember a kill in this movie. Yeah, he kills a couple people. It's that boring. And aren't they all like off-screen deaths, obviously? Like, you know, because it's a monkey, obviously. So it's always like something like rolling on the floor, making him slip down the stairs or something. You'll see. Which reminds me, have you did, did you watch Terror Tract yet with Walter White fighting a monkey? No, I didn't. You fuck up. Hey, man. What is it with you and not watching monkey movies when, right whenever you find out about them? Why are you getting on to me about a movie I, I still haven't watched yet when I'm in the middle of watching a movie you can hound me to watch? Like, <sighs> one thing at a time, baby. You know? Come on. He tried to kill himself. I don't blame him. He's in this movie. I would have stuck my dick in, in his mouth since there's plastic in it. That was probably the actor trying to kill himself on set. And they just kept it for the footage. Yeah. He's like, I can't believe my agent signed me up for this movie. Hey, it's the fucking Mrs. W- Mr. Wilson's fucking wife from uh, the Dennis the Menace movie. Mm, never seen him. Great movie. Christopher Lloyd. 
one of his best acting roles. Do you know Christopher Lloyd's in those? Plays He plays a dirty, greasy fucking child molester. Oh, good. He's hanging out. I mean, they never come right out and say it, but he's hanging out watching kids at the fucking playground. It's pretty funny. You know what? Uh, you know what I've watched lately? I, well, last night I watched, in spirit of you, uh, I watched this Twilight Zone. It was this Twilight Zone special they aired in the 90s, hosted by James Earl Jones. And what it was is they created two episodes of two scripts that were never actually went. Into- that were never used. And you said you didn't like it. That's probably why they never used them. They never went into production. <laughs> and it was weird because the thing, at the special itself was like two hours long. Really? And it was it was really out of, oh no, maybe it was more like an hour and 40 minutes. But it was really off balance because it was two scripts. And I swear the first one felt like it was 30 minutes and the other one was like an hour and 15. It was really fucking out of balance and out of whack. And They must have rewrote them because the original scripts are only 30 minutes long. They were padded. They were loud. They were long. The second one was really long. Yeah. But um, they were just boring. Yeah, and I I wonder what kind of liberties they took to modernize them, maybe, because mm-hmm. there's no way that they had to have like doctored them up a little bit, but they just weren't very good. Oh, but that that wasn't good. I didn't like that. I had myself over the weekend a stepfather ugh, stepfather marathon. Okay, and you um, didn't watch the Monster Vision version of Stepfather. How can I? It it was on YouTube. I have it. I I downloaded it when it was on YouTube. Well, so. I got to say, the Monster Vision stuff's hard because it's still edited. Yeah, that's what sucks. I love this new Joe Bob, man. I got to tell you, they hit it out of the park. Once they got all their technical stuff out of the way, they really nailed it. Like I I was in nostalgic bliss the whole time. It felt like classic Joe Bob with me still acknowledging that it was new. And I loved it because there was no fucking commercials. It was just Joe Bob breaks. And the movies aren't edited. It's Mm -hmm. like this is actually better than it ever was. That's why you should watch that... uh, that edit i made of the the friday 13th uh, marathon i put in all the original like from my blu-ray so it's not edited so it's so okay so it, but it's still got the joe bob cuts yeah does it go does it go from uh sd shitty like tape joe bob to hd yeah interesting and mm-hmm. does with the editing, with the edit still in place, and I mean nothing cut out, does that somehow like make the Joe Bob banter weird? Because those are things. I, that's the only reason I watch them for, baby. Okay, so you actually watch those still now? How do? Where do I have access to see these? I put them on the box a while ago, but I might have had to clear them out, so I might I could put them back in if you didn't get them. Yeah, I didn't even notice it, but uh, yeah, dude, they hit it out of the park. I love it. And I hope they do more. Because Joe Bob himself hasn't missed a beat. He really hasn't. He sounds fucking great. And his and his new male girls have big fake tits and fucking Botox fillers in their face. Yeah, they they got somebody that uh some kind of horror lady that people goes to conventions or so I don't know who she is, but apparently she was known somehow. I, I don't know who she is either, but uh Yeah, so I, I loved it, man. I and it really does. It really does make the movies more enjoyable. I, I can't even I can't even really explain it because it's even even the way they are now on Shutter. It's the same movies you can watch them without Joe Bob, but waiting for his little interlude and his banter and his his knowledge is I don't know. It just makes it great. I'm gonna go see Riverman here in uh, September, and uh, we'll probably have a Joe Bob marathon like old times. Mm-hmm. Sit in his basement. And at the end, they did hint that he may be back, baby. He will, man. The whole time he was hamming it up, like if you miss it, you're gonna regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. This is it. I like, yeah, they really they did everything they did on Monster Vision. They acted like it was happening live, like because like that was a thing. They that was kind of their shtick. They're like, this is live, and it never was because they had to film it during the day and it sh- they aired it at night. Yeah, what'd you think of his new set? It looked fine to me. Yeah, it was cool. Are you surprised they didn't try and reenact the old the old one to a T? The old set, yeah. Because the old set, he was outside of his trailer. Mm-hmm. This one was inside. But anyway, this movie could use some Joe Bob. That's for fucking sure. Jeez. Yeah, they could do like, just have Joe Bob fucking 
I'd watch him host any movie. A fucking exploitation. <sighs> drama. Dude, we are only 26 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, this is 26 minutes into the greatness. Now the monkey's here. He's going to make it all better. It took a long time for this monkey to get here, man. Yeah, he, he was a little diva on set, I heard. He wouldn't come out of his trailer until he had, like, a bowl full of green M&Ms or some shit. Mm. That beard looks fake. It's got to be fake. It does, yeah. It's got to be a based on, like, we don't want to wait two weeks to three weeks for you to grow that shit. Wasn't that uh, George Romero's wife, his first wife? Right there? I think so. I don't know, man. I think it was. She was on Martin. I think that's when they met. Mm. I don't like Martin either. Fuck you. Do you see him etching his nuts? I love that. Who did? The monkey? The monkey. You ever go to the zoo and see a big fucking gorilla itch their nuts? It's the funniest thing. One time when we went to the uh, zoo when I was a kid in Omaha, Nebraska, the Henry Dorley Zoo, uh, we were on a field trip and these kids were like, you know, do not tap the glass. Do not tease the, the gorillas. Or these, there's usually signs or something. And the kids, they were like tapping the glass, tapping the glass. And this monkey kept like, he was he had his back to the wall. And he he had his arms crossed and he was fuming. You could see his face from the side, how pissed he was. And they would just keep tapping the glass and taunting this gorilla. And then eventually, every now and again, he would just like stand up and slam the glass and like roar because he was getting pissed. And he'd try and hold back, hold back even more. But these fucking kids kept doing their shit again. And the monkey just didn't give a shit anymore, man. He fucking, he started slamming that glass and he started backing up. And he started ramming it. Have you thought if you broke it and just started choking the kids out? He did. No, he start he started to crack. <laughs> it did. No, no, no. He started shoulder ramming the glass as hard as it could. And then the gra- the glass cracked. And then we all had to leave the the whole gorilla exhibit, which is indoors. Everybody. I would have beat the shit out of those kids. Yeah, it's like, dude, can you imagine that fucking monkey got out, man, just started fuck ass fucking all his little kids? <laughs> he just rubs his cock in their face. <laughs> Choke some with it. It would have been Harambe all over again. I don't think anybody had guns there. It wouldn't have been Harambe. It would have been what Harambe would have wanted to do. That that monkey just would have wreaked. Can you imagine if a gorilla in a little exhibit started wreaking havoc and everybody's running for the exit? A gorilla on the loose. He just bashes the kid's skull in and puts their face on his face like a mask. You guys would probably never have to go to school again. You could be like, I'm traumatized, mom. Do you think if the gorilla actually made it out of the exhibit and he was running loose in the actual zoo... Do you think they'd have to control? They'd have to call like animal control or something. But do you think uh, they'd have to trank it or something? Do uh, you think it would just start going after all the people, or do you think it would like chill out and go into a corner somewhere and start picking its ass? Probably. You don't think it would just like run amok? Like- unless, unless I don't know. Unless it felt threatened. So if the kids tapped on the glass, could have pissed it off enough. I think, well, you don't think it would have had a weird reaction? Because if, even if you weren't part of that exhibit where you saw that happen, if you just fucking were walking through the zoo and you saw a gorilla out and about, like walking past a snow cone fucking truck, mm-hmm. I, everybody would start running the other way. I mean, I don't know Probably. if that would like alarm it. Yeah. Would you rather go up against a shark in water or a gorilla in its tank? Uh, either. Either? You want to go for either? I'd go for either. Or you mean neither? No, I, I. Sharks don't scare me like unless they're big enough to swallow a man whole. But, but, but if you're in the water with the shark, well, that would scare me. But now, then I'm not in the water. Okay, well, okay, but so you're either a, a shark in his element, or you're in a gorilla in his element in a fucking cage. It's not his element, but. I think they're trained to be okay with some people because they they do have to go into their cages to like feed them and shit. Okay, well, you're making this difficult. Let's say this gorilla (laughs) fucking hates you. He ain't okay with you, Zach. He wants to fist fuck you. He's had his eye on you and your asshole for a long time, Zach. Then I would run in there and fucking present my ass to him. What if the gorilla was actually really, really... um, Consider it. What if he just put a finger in it first to warm you up? He started finger banging you with his big ass gorilla finger. I'd be like, fucking stop being considerate and shove your old fist in there, fucker. <laughs> and what if he takes that finger after he sticks it in your ass and then you look behind yourself over the shoulder and you see him like sucking his finger, <laughs> sucking that ass, that ass finger. And then he pulls his cock out of what? He's already naked. I don't know. 
but he, un- he unravels it and he fucking holds your head down and he just monkey fucks you. What if the monkey has like a dog's dick? Uh-huh. I guess it's more like a human's dick, yeah. What's weird is though, you never see a gorilla dick. Do you see a gorilla dick? I don't know. Is it super out in the open? Because if, if if a gorilla dick was like a human dick, it would just be flopping around. You know, just can you imagine big cock and balls? Just because you would remember that at the zoo. Like, oh my god, look at that giant giant dick on that gorilla, mm-hmm. just hanging down. You know, fucking dragging the dirt because they would. They drag the dirt. Be uncomfortable. Come on, stretch for it. Good talk. Good talk. <laughs> this movie is so bad because the whole thing is a fucking guy talking to a fucking monkey. It's amazing. It's a look at this. This is not good. The monkey's helpful. Look at him. He's opening the book and shit. Does anybody like this movie? I'm very serious Me. here. It's not good. I'm gonna look up the reviews of it. What is the uh, Rotten Tomatoes on this one? It's this movie is fucking amazing. I want to fuck it. If this movie had a cock, I would suck it. If it had a vagina, I would. I can't believe this fucking movie has fifty percent. To be honest with you. You know, trolling aside, Zach, what do you think of this movie? Please tell me. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> All right. It's the greatest movie G- fucking Romero ever made. <clears throat> it's fucking amazing. Oh, look, he's hungry. Look at this. I'm going to read the negative reviews on Rotten Tomatoes for it because I don't want to I don't want to read the good ones. Look at this. Here's a good one. One of George Romero's most effective and interesting horror thrillers. What? It is. It's a it's a great movie, baby. You're just too fucking you're you just don't get it. It's really fucking high art. You just don't understand. Roger Ebert said, "Somewhere within this movie's 2 hours or so is hidden an absolutely spellbinding 90-minute thriller." Is there? I mean, hell yeah. Maybe, maybe a serious fucking edit would help. I mean, it would only help this movie. Apparently, uh, George Romero edited the movie and then the studio re-edited it and he got pissed and he didn't do another studio movie for a couple years. Okay, so are you trying to tell me George Romero's was even longer? Uh, I don't know if it was longer. It was just a different edit of it. Mm. I don't know. I don't like it, though. It's it's fucking boring. It's horrible. This guy's beard is ridiculous. I want to snatch it off. Speaking of uh, Christopher Reeves, it's funny, who was obviously in a wheelchair. I know you were making that uh, comparison earlier, but he was also in the Rear uh, rear Window or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, that remake uh, where he's also in a wheelchair. Yep. But there was no monkey, so I like that movie substantially more. Oh, fuck you. It would be funny if the, if the monkey ever ripped that fucking beard off his face during filming. <laughs> Probably. That would have been funny if it was peeling off. And then just took the beard and fucked it. Yeah, I was talking about the movies I'd watched, um, and I, I had a Stepfather marathon. And, you know, I like the first Stepfather. It's good. I like it. Jill Sholin in that movie, baby. Yeah, from... Uh, she shows the titties, and she's only supposed to be, like, 14. So... Which is funny. You're talking about the first one? Yeah. She's 16. She's, She's 16. 16. Okay. But she wasn't really in real life. And I was thinking about that too. It's funny how like back in the day that was totally cool to do that, to have like 16 year old girls having sex and naked, as long as the actors weren't 16, but you can imply <laughs> a 16 year olds in the shower naked. Genius. Or whatever. We need to bring those days back. How old was she though? Uh, she was like 20 maybe. She uh, Apparently she like her and Brad Pitt dated for a while. So the first one's really good. Um, I really like it. And uh, the second one I had never seen. I still liked it, though. It, 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 in a way, takes away from the grounded realism of the first one. Because now it's like, all right, he's doing it again, really. And he's getting away with it. It's kind of silly and hokey, right? Yeah. Directed by Jeff Burr, the king of the fucking straight-to-video sequels. But the second one was not straight-to-video. It was supposed to be. Yeah, it ended up going to theaters. Because they were so impressed with the with the quality. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, I like Stepfather 2. That it's only crime is that it just takes a little bit away from the first one. That's it. But it's still a good movie. Um, and Terry O'Quinn's fucking awesome. I mean, he chews up every fucking scene, so he's great. But um, it's actually uh, based on a true story too. Loosely, mm-hmm. loosely. Uh, but 
yeah, the, f- the first one as a standalone is really good, man, because like I said, it is grounded in a certain realism where there's cases like that, man. You're always, cause it's kind of like, uh, people used to always talk about that. You know, people used to be scared about bringing new fathers into the mix. Cause you don't know if they're like a child molester or what the fucking, I don't know. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, now, the biggest mistake of the weekend was that I actually watched Stepfather Three, and that movie was horrible. I don't remember hating that movie; it was just stupid, dude. It's dumb. It's like a. It reminded me of a USA made-for-TV movie, like a movie you would see on Monster Vision some night. No, it was like made-for-TV quality. It was not good. It was just. It was just shitty. It was boring. And they couldn't get Terry O'Quinn back, so they just wrote it into the script that he had to get plastic surgery to change his appearance. How stupid is that? How fucking dumb is that? It's actually not that dumb if you think about it. It's pretty fucking dumb. But uh, what better way? Because they don't even explain how he got. A, in the second one, it's implied that he dies. But let's say he did. They pulled the. They pulled it again. Where in the first one? Let's just say they say they locked him up. I was expecting there to be more of a. Uh, epilogue or a pro- which one a prologue i don't know which one it is the one at the beginning kind of like the second one had to mm-hmm. clear up the loose ends of the first one it didn't it just showed him going to that fucking surgeon i'm like what so what happened at the end of the second one he just got up and walked away baby it makes no sense because they knew it would be fucking dumb for us to believe that he escaped from another psych ward mm-hmm. i it, the movie's dumb i think if they were gonna have to get another actor they should have just told a different story with a different guy, you know, that's no fun watching that same guy. Cause he was clearly trying to do his best Terry O'Quinn in- impression, the way he talked and everything else and his mannerisms. And of course he's whistling that fucking stupid song too. It just, it never convinced me for a second. Apparently Terry O'Quinn doesn't want anything to do with that movie. Now they try to get him to come and do something for the Blu-ray that I got. And he didn't want to, he didn't return the phone calls. Well, they, they wanted him to have a cameo in the remake, and he declined. Oh, really? Yeah, he declined that. But He's going through that thing where they don't like the horror movies anymore. He'll be back. But that's the movie that broke him. He doesn't like the first one? I guess. I mean, he's obviously really famous for Lost also, which I never watched that show. I haven't either. I didn't know he disowned the, that movie, though. Just like a child. He disowned it. It's really sad. Well, that's dumb because I think that's one of those horror movies that's actually a good movie. Just a good film. The first one. Oh, I love this line that the monkey delivers here. Listen. He talks? Did you not hear that? What'd he say? (laughs) My fucking soundboard ain't working. (laughs) Oh, I was really waiting for something. You fucked up. I played the fucking Rugrats soundbite. Thork hungry. Thork want to eat. Okay. Well, you know, you didn't have to say that. You could have just plugged it in in post, but now it's going to sound dumb if you plug it in post and explain why we didn't hear it. Oh, well. Well, it's it's there anyway. I don't have to plug it in. It's it's going to be on my recording. It's your fucking fault you didn't hear it, bitch. Oh. You're, gonna, you're the one that looks <laughs> dumb. I see. See, that monkey's fucking cute. Why would you want that monkey taking care of you? You think you can train the monkey to jack you off? No, man. Do you think Michael Jackson's monkey bubbles jacked him off? You think he fucked that? Did you see a story recently about, like, apparently the the father of Michael Jackson chemically castrated him? Yeah. Was there anything to that? Um. Well, we're just going off the words of the guy that killed him, <laughs> you know? So take his, take his words however you want to, because it's the guy that served time for... Um, I guess malpractice would it be, but is it, is it considered that? I don't know if he, if he even asked for it. It's weird. So what are you talking about? Oh yeah. He was demanding. Well, come on. It, you're the doctor, right? You don't prescribe something just cause someone asked for it. You don't give it to him. If it was Michael Jackson, he wants you to kill him, but you probably fucking kill him. But what's your what's your opinion on the actual chemical castration? Castr- people have said that people have had that theory for a long time. Um, I don't, it's not out of the question because he's clearly fucking weird and he clearly had, think about it, hear his voice, man, obviously the high pitched voice thing. And some people will say, no, his voice was much deeper in person. Like, you know, he faked that and stuff. And I know there's recordings at the very end of his life, you know, for the, this is it and the behind the scenes stuff where his 
voice is a lot deeper. It's more like this, you know. It's not. It's not like this anymore. Yeah, their voices get deeper the older they get, though. Yeah, and and he might have been taking something or whatever. He, I don't know. But the thing is, you got to also look at his body. His body was underdeveloped. He had no chest. He had like a caved in chest. Oh, like, he had a fucking amazing chest. Aching for a nut. I know. Like you're yeah. saying. Yeah. But I'm saying he had the physique of a 12 year old. Oh yeah. He really did. Oh yeah. So who knows, man? Bill Doe Treve. The Bill Dozer. Would you have fought Bill Doe Treve? Depends. Was it before or after his breath smelled of rotting garbage? Remember when he got all like muscles and Macho Man was hanging out at his house? Yeah, that's a good episode. Macho Man and uh, Diedrich Bader was one of the meatheads. That's a good episode, man. Because he loved the pump. The pump. Do you get the bump? It's like calming. I wish I could watch that, man. Fucking Netflix. Why they do that? Well, who knows what's going on with that whole reboot? I mean, that doesn't sound like it's happening anymore to me. Yeah. I mean, Mike Judge is so busy. I mean, Mike Judge has Silicon Valley or whatever because that's a hit show. Maybe he doesn't have any interest. Oh, the guy that did the Borat stuff, he's, he's got a new show coming out tonight. Hmm. Oh, was a new show? Yeah, I'm secretly hoping it's just a fucking surprise third season of the Ali G show. Is that the one where, where he, that teaser I saw where he's playing the gun advocate? And it showed fucking Dick Cheney signing a waterboard kit. <laughs> So, I didn't realize it was a TV show. I thought it was another movie. No. It's on Showtime tonight. And it's funny because... Wasn't Ali G on HBO? I've It might have been. But what's funny is uh, Showtime... I'm not supposed to have it. But like my cable company must have fucked up and gave it to me. Shh. Because I can see it. Shh. I'll probably cut that out. Yeah, that's a good point. No, don't worry about it. I don't think they're fucking listening. They're going to go after you. They're not going to go after you, Zach. Zach. <laughs> but it's funny, like years ago, like uh, I had a digital cable box in my room and like we had all the channels, every single movie channel and everything. We had to get rid of it at one point. Mm-hmm. And so every box like somehow didn't have it except for mine. So like they would just take my box in the front room when they wanted to watch something. Yeah. And I could still watch all my fucking Cinemax skin flicks. That happened to us too, man. My, um, for some reason, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it might have been a case where we got, you know, they'll give like a free bundle for a while, like a trial. You know, they'll give everybody free back in the day, the cable companies. Yeah, yeah. Everybody gets all the Skinamax channels, whatever, for free for a month. They still do that too, yeah. Okay. So I don't know if that happened first or if it was just a fluke from the get go. But regardless, even if we had a trial. We had different cable boxes in the house. I had one in my bedroom, and I had we all had them. Um, anyway, whenever it was gone, mine still had it. Yeah. But the whole house, it, it canceled. And I never told my parents I still had it in my room. I kept it a secret. Mm, I remember one time, like, you remember how uh, if you had normal cable, you could just turn it to, like, Cinemax or something, and it would be all scrambled? Some some stations would not be scrambled that badly, and you could uh, watch movies. Yeah, I remember my dad like had this little metal piece that you 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 like screwed into the end of your like the axle on the yeah yeah the input of your fucking cable, and then mm-hmm. put it into your TV, and it unscrambled it. Oh wow, it was crazy. Was it picture perfect or just good enough? Yeah, it just gave you the channel then. Interesting. But that was like gold, man. When I came, when I, oh, you know what? I don't even know if we ever had it. Okay, so I don't think we ever had, or I didn't even notice we had like uh, a trial or whatever. I just remember going north on the cable box. I I didn't really know we had those channels, and we didn't have those channels, so I had no reason to sit there and like go to channel whatever the fuck they were. But I, I just started going through the channels one day, and it, it went pretty high. I'm talking like in the 200, and all of a sudden, I had all these fucking movie channels, and I... I just stumbled across it one day, and it was the greatest thing ever, man. I was like, oh, my God, treasure trove. It happens so often, it seems like. I actually, like, I'll I'll look at the Spice channel, the Playboy channel, to see if they're ever working sometimes. Those are still things? <laughs> yeah. Those exist still? 
I wonder if they're cheaper now that the internet exists, though. Dude, they're fucking irrelevant now that yeah. the internet exists is what it is. Mm-hmm. Dude, I didn't realize those channels were still around. Yeah. Why would anybody want to watch that, like, dolled up high dollar porn? I don't know, baby. I mean, is it really better? We don't. Do people just want to get down to the nitty gritty anyway, the brass tacks. I want to see people fucking. I want to see a close up. And You want the POV shot. But I'm shitty like Bang Bus or whatever is going to do that. <laughs> you know? But I remember uh, the Playboy channel or Spice, one of those used to have like like a naked weather channel, weather show or a naked news show. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you could at least, so that would be practical. It's like, well, make it to where I can get some programming in there. Like, let me watch a news station that's giving me the news, but they're fucking big tits and naked. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I don't know. They used to have that. Talking vaginas giving the news. That's weird. They just, they just, they do it like Jim Carrey with his butt and Ace Ventura. It's like, oh, <laughs> and they give the news with their jinies. So, Zach, even if like you did check the Spice Network or the Playboy channel and you did have them, you'd seriously watch them with the internet and all these devices we have. You would actually put time into that. Probably not very often. You know, I mean, I don't know. To be honest with you, I, you know, I've always said it. I'm not a huge, like, I'm not a big porn guy. I'm really not. And I'm definitely not an advocate for it because I do think it's kind of bad but uh, and poisonous. Fuck you. But I will say this. There's nothing really a turn on about the the porn of, like, the 90s, the big 90s porn scene where, like I said, that the tits were super fake. There was a lot of just, uh, you know what I'm saying, like, fake ass faces, fake tits, fake asses. A lot of overcaked on makeup, shitty storylines, and just productions. It's just not, and it wasn't even like that good. Like even on the Playboy channel, none of it was like super raunchy. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm saying if I if I was gonna sit there and watch that shit, I'd rather just have regular looking people. Yeah, you know, hot chicks, but not like fake looking chicks. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The fake look is it, it's overstated. It's welcome. Get the fuck out of here. Stop getting that shit. And they all and they all had like fucking landing strips down there in the nineties. That was huge. The Hitler's mustache and the landing strips. It was huge. Yeah, you could fucking you could burn your nose on their sideburn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. But don't get me wrong, I got off to it when I was like a kid and that's all you had. Yeah, remember the Shannon Tweed ones? Uh no, I never watched that. Oh really? I know who she is, but the fucking, uh, fucking uh, Emmanuel Space. That was the 90s, right? Yeah. Joe Bob did a marathon Did a, a marathon on Showtime for Emmanuel movies. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, one day I used to check the mail uh, where I lived when I was in high school, like a freshman in high school. And I, I checked the mail this one day. And inside, you know how at your house or if you move to an apartment or something, sometimes you get somebody's old mail that used to live at your address. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that was the case here, but we got this thing in the mail that was on our address, but it was addressed to somebody else. So I'm guessing it used to be the old uh, person that lived there, but it was like this. It was like a, I don't know how to describe it. It was a porn magazine. But not really. It was kind of like a TV guide of porn. It was it, it was shaped like a TV guide about that size, but it was thick. Maybe it had like a hundred pages, a couple hundred pages, and and it had a lot of like mail order stuff in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was like a catalog of sorts. Yeah. But it was a fully decked out X rated catalog. You know, it, it, where it showed you all this shit and all these models, dude. I I stowed that thing away and I used to beat off like crazy to it. I still have a fucking uh, Hustler magazine somewhere that, like, me and Mac found when we were, like, at band practice one time. And it's funny because we wrote shit in it. Like, there's a there's a picture of a chick, like, with a dick in her mouth, and we, we wrote Got Milk on it or something. I should find it. We can make memes out of it and put it on uh, fucking our Snapchat or our whatever. Well, you'd have to cover up the nudity. Make some dank mems. I want to know 
who this magical guy was that was leading that was leaving porn in all the woods for all the kids to find. Because this, you know, I I know that story didn't involve you guys finding anything in the woods, but you ever notice that a lot of people find porno mags in the woods when you're with your friends when you're kids? You mm-hmm. just find like a random Playboy in the woods. Yeah, I wonder why that's a thing. I have a funny story about finding, like one time. Oh, actually, is this turning you on? By the way, her soap in his oh, chest. Oh yeah, down? look at that fucking chest, that bare chest. I'm gonna go fill up my water. I'll be right back. So you, you keep him entertained. I'll tell you the story when I get back. All right, you better fucking hurry up, man. Don't leave me here alone too long. Because what am I gonna do? Talk about this fucking movie? This movie sucks. And I gotta say, I apologize to anybody out there that really wanted us to pay super in depth attention to it and talk about it. But, you know, if you guys have listened to us for a while, you know I, I have no interest in this one at all. And I've been dreading this day for a very long time. It's not good. It always kind of reminded me of a TV movie. It kind of looks like Brian's song. Everything about it is just very cheap. Um, I don't know who thought it was a good idea. I don't know who thought this was a great concept. Did Romero write this? I don't even fucking know. I just know he directed it. I don't even know what's going on right now. It's just every time I turn my head, it's another scene with this fucking guy who can't walk in bed or in his dumbass chair with a straw and a monkey. And I just don't see anything developing from it. Hmm. I'm back, babe. Good. So we're watching fucking uh, Mrs. Wilson fucking jack him off, hopefully. I actually is that his mother? I don't know if that's her. Maybe it's not. Is that his mother? I thought she just looks older in that movie. Um, is that his mom? Is it his mom Jack's mom? Uh, is it? I don't. I think he just called him off. I don't fucking know. That would be fucking hot if his mom jacked him off. You ever watch those porns? <laughs> dude i'm assuming you have is that part of your story is that a segue dude there are there are fucking porns where they're like talking to you like oh hey son ah uh, look at that cock your dad doesn't have a cock like that oh like first person like uh at pov yeah i always watch them because they're so fucked up and you get off to them don't you well now what's funny is uh since i watch them answer the question you've gotten off to one of those i have jacked off before it depends on how hot the chick is but like what's funny is because i started watching them because they were so fucked up the fucking site porn up started recommending more of them to me like you like this shit right and you've watched them haven't you i have it, like i said <laughs> it depends on how hot the chick is yeah but that that can't be enough zach you got this chick it's like a pov thing and it's i usually a lot of times i just mute the movie too (laughs) you're a liar you're a fucking liar i I, sometimes i do sometimes i'll leave it up and just laugh at it no you're a liar you're like oh yeah this fucking mom shit's hot (laughs) yeah i want to come in mommy because that would be extra naughty because that would be really bad if i impregnated mommy right that shit it's fucked like if you find those videos on Pornhub, you might see me trolling like in the comments too. Do you do that? Do you comment on those videos? Yeah, I got my own fucking sign in and shit. Really? <laughs> yeah, you gotta get one so you can save videos to your favorite list. So it's all there. It's your personal spank bank. <laughs> but yeah, that that funny story I had one time, me and that friend that fucked the dog. Who will remain nameless? We fucking like we went to the, the, the gas station and bought a condom. We were like I don't know ten years old. We bought a condom and we we like we took it with us because we were going like mushroom hunting with his dad. And so like that sounds gay as shit. Look at the the fucking monkey. Look like he's jacking off there. It did. But yeah, we were going mushroom hunting. You you never went mushroom hunting. No, it sounds like you're looking for dicks to suck. But okay. You've never done that? That shit's good shit. No, I know people that do it, though. They pick mushrooms. My dad, that was his favorite time of the year, baby. It was mushroom season. But yeah, we... What do you do with them? What do you do with the mushrooms when you get them? We cook them. And you cook them? You wash them. You let them sit in water overnight. And then you cook them, and they're dank as fuck, though. Put them on a sandwich. How do you know you're not getting a poison one? You know, the people that do it know which ones are bad and stuff. But, like, we need to get some magic ones and, and spike spike the mushroom bowl there. That'd be awesome. But anyway, that chick's kind of cute. 
I think she played, I think she was on Full House one time and she played Danny Tanner's sister. She looks like the chick that played Danny Tanner's sister on one episode. Maybe. She worked at a zoo or something. She traveled around. She was like a marine biologist or a zoologist. And that might be true. And she kind of reminds me of uh, one of the chicks from uh, Three's Company. Joey dated her yeah. when she got was in the episode. Man, this fucking guy right here with the mustache, this guy was in Mrs. Doubtfire. He was the guy that Mrs. Doubtfire stole the job of. Yeah. Fucking because he was boring. Now, this Tyrannosaurus Rex, a carnivore. And then, yeah, and then... Yeah, back to my story before I got sorry. sidetracked by, by the, the the hot piece of ass on screen. Yeah, he is kind of hot. Look at his mustache. You'd like to ride it? Yeah. You'd ride that mustache? I would fucking ride it. Okay. See, that's a that's an x-ray of my cock after he sucked it. He broke it. <laughs> okay, get back to your story. <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we went mushroom hunting, and so I'm like, give me that condom you got in your pocket. So I open it up, and I blow it up. I, we basically pretended like I found it in the woods and put it in my mouth. We, I played dumb like I didn't know what it was. Because I always did sh- stupid shit like that when I was with him and with his dad. Because his dad never told on me. But this time he decided to tell my dad. So we go back home and he tells my dad. And he's, and my dad was like, fuck. And he, he, he's like, Zach, why'd you do that? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, you know what those are used for, right? And I was like, No. <laughs> He's like, people wear those so that they can't get pregnant. They put them on their dick. I was like, oh, I never told him that we bought it. I, I don't know why. So you see, so you're playing dumb, obviously. <laughs> Wait, so what did you do with the condom? I, I oh yeah, I, I put it in my mouth and I blew it up like a balloon and threw it at his dad, and he he freaked out. He's like, stop, what him down, down, go down. It was pretty awesome. Okay, well, so why did your dad really care? You just blew into it. It's not a big deal. I thought you like put the mushroom in it and you started filleting it. I did. I put the whole thing in my mouth and kind of chewed it like it was bubble gum. Oh, fucking really? <laughs> it, it tasted fucking nasty. Yeah, dude, because it's got all that fucking lube, like that, that weird lube on it. Mm-hmm. Was it one of those ones that had like all the lubey stuff on it? Probably, yeah. Dude, you're fucking nasty. So now if somebody ever asks you, have you ever had a condom in your mouth? For whatever reason, we don't care about the context. You would have to say yes. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got the idea from that movie, uh, fucking Werewolf in Paris, the fucking sequel to American Werewolf in London. Yeah. Like you didn't you didn't get it from Coneheads when he chewed it like bubble gum? No, I got it from that other movie, the shittier movie. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Everett Scott. Yeah. Was that actually a legit sequel? I didn't know that. Pretty much, yeah. It didn't have any of the original people involved in it. I actually like... I, I, I'll watch American Warfare from Paris again. I'll watch them. I like the original, too. The, they're, they're good. That, the first one's good. The second one, not so much. It's got some shitty CG, but i watch it again. But the scene, like... He has a, a pocket full of condoms for some reason. Because he's playing on nailing this chick he met in Paris. And he reaches into his pocket and pulls money out or something. And all of them fall out. And she's like, what is that? And he's like, chewing gum. Jeez. And then uh, she she grabs it and tries to open it. And he grabs it real quick and starts chewing it. Blows a bubble with it. And the bu- the bubble's got a little a little tip tip for your cock head. A little cum tip. It's mm-hmm. for your cum. Yeah. It's for your load. It's fucking gross, Zach. <laughs> you had that. How did, did you, were you chewing on the tip? I chewed the whole thing. That's fucking weird, man. Fucking band around it. <laughs> I should have like I should have grabbed like a fucking uh, stick and then put the condom on the stick with my mouth. What color was it? I don't remember. Probably just normal. What color was the wrapper? I think white. <laughs> That's weird. But yeah, we didn't even I didn't even play it off like I found it in the wrapper. It was I just played it off like I found it laying there. Oh, that's funny. I would have had to clear my conscience for, you know, <laughs> eventually at some point when I grew up. Like, hey, Dad, I got to tell you, man, I didn't just find a random condom on the ground and put it in my mouth. I'm not that fucking stupid. It's It's been with me ever since. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you. I never told him. So, man, until he, all the way to the end, your dad assumed you fucking put a used condom in your mouth and chewed on it. Probably forgot about it. Used, he, so he assumed it was a used condom, probably. Probably. That's what I was going for. Oh. 
<sighs> Dude, and your dad fucking th- just believed that. Oh, look, he's... That's so fucking nasty. He's fucking... He's, he bit his lip because he's trying to get the... He's trying to satisfy the monkey's bloodlust so he won't kill again. Hey, Zach, how old were you again when this happened? Like 10, 9 something. And you never wanted to clear the air and tell your dad, Hey, I didn't put a used condom that was full of cum in my mouth. No, I liked that he thought I did. You're fucked up. <laughs> That's so funny. I should have said, like, there was some clam chowder in it. Oh, my gosh. I was hungry before I chewed on it, but then I I was full. So you said, what did the clerk think when a couple of 10-year-olds were buying condoms? That's why we did it in the bathroom, because you could get it in the machine. Oh, the, the machine? Okay. That's funny. <laughs> That was a thing. Like back before the internet, people were fucking embarrassed to go buy condoms. So now you could just do it on the internet. But you used to have to show your face when you bought this. This fucking ugly fuck is gonna fuck tonight. What do you think of that? Or you could just do self checkout. Go to like Walmart. Yeah, I remember that old uh, like Tom Green show skit where he made a whole thing out of buying condoms. No, <laughs> he went to the store and he got him. He's like, yeah, I'm just buying these condoms. You're probably thinking, gee, who's the lucky lady? He's basically trying to make it even more embarrassing than it already was. Can you? Did your mom ever send you to the store to buy to pick up a few things, like groceries or anything? Uh, yeah. Okay, so what if your mom was like, oh, and pick up some condoms? <laughs> you know, like, oh, you can buy them. It's, uh, you know, she knew that they're not going to say no. Because there's no age limit on condoms, right? Like, they're not going to not sell, like, a 10-year-old condoms, right? Mm-hmm. I don't imagine. Um, but yeah, would your mom ever put you up to buying condoms too? Just casually put that on the list for her. Yeah. My mom had her tubes tied, so she didn't have to worry about it. That's disgusting to think about too. (laughs) So so she was taking fat nuts. Gross. (laughs) I'm so sick. (laughs) I remember that. I was like, mom, am I ever going to have another little brother or sister? She's like, I can't. I have my tubes tied. What's that mean? Uh, no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That all my family talks like me. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be a funny like Christmas dinner, uh, family reunion. It's like a bunch of that, and they all look like you too. Your mom looks like you with a little beard, and it's all. It's like when uh, on Simpsons when they went to Bronson instead of Branson, and everybody had Charles Bronson's face. But um, that'd be genius. Yeah, that's fucking weird. I wonder why my mom never got it. Can't be that expensive of an operation to do. Tube side. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people do it. And you could always reverse it or whatever. Yeah, I don't know why people don't do that more. I mean, it's got to be an in outpatient thing, you know, super easy. I think uh, it's, it's quicker and easier for the guy to get it too. But you can't reverse it. I think you can reverse it now. On the guy. To get snipped? Uh, if you just get it, like, tied or whatever. I didn't know you can get it tied. I thought you just get it snipped. They do something where they can... They even have it where if you pay more money, you can get a fucking switch to turn it on and off. A Nintendo switch? You get, like, a little switch that's under your skin. I remember seeing, like, a YouTube demonstration of it. Like a doctor thing. Dude, that's fucked up. So what if while you're fucking, you accidentally trigger the switch when you're just pounding <laughs> flesh? Yeah, and if you're if you're doing it pretty rough, that switch could dig into their ass. <laughs> Just like poke them. I don't know. I don't like the idea of a switch inside me. I, and I, I saw I saw another one on YouTube of a guy like for erectile dysfunction. They have a, a tube that you can uh, like squeeze, like like airing up a tire, and it makes your dick hard. What's so dysfunctional about a reptile? Did he have a bad childhood? A reptile? Did I say reptile? Uh, it sounded like it, but no, you probably didn't. This looks like the chick from Three's Company that was in uh, Devil's Rejects. Yeah. That gets uh, the the barrel of the gun in the Johnny. Speaking of Switch, Nintendo Switch, I don't I know you don't have one yet, but I, I bought a couple of games over the weekend that I still have to dive into. Noise! Did you get that Hollow Knight? No. I've been I've been playing through uh that Ori game again. That's like uh Metroidvania. It's pretty fucking fun. I'm thinking maybe we could do that for a retro rampage sometime. Yeah, I'd be down. I want. I wish everything would just go to the Nintendo Switch, man, because it. I love laying in bed 
I'm just playing handheld. I haven't played that thing. Yeah, it's cool to have the option to play handheld or on your TV. Well, and I've heard a lot of people doing that. Like when they announced the Switch, everybody's like, the console gamers, it's a console. Like, oh, I'm just going to play it on my TV. But a lot of the people that don't like handheld games and only play on the TV find themselves pretty much predominantly playing handheld on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Handheld. And I, that same with me. I always never really cared for handhelds. I like those games that are just self-explanatory. They don't have a bunch of cutscenes. You don't have to follow a story because it's fun to just like turn on music or a podcast and play them. Yeah, and that's what's and I, I love it, man. And i i played I played a bit of Mario Galaxy on my TV, but not much. But I, I beat ninety five eight ninety eight percent of that game handheld. Uh, everything I play on is handheld. I've I've never played. The Street Fighter arcade collection. I've never, I haven't plugged that thing on my TV in fuck seven months. Mm. I love laying in bed. I got Toad's Treasure Tracker because I'm a sucker for puzzle games, you know, kind of games like that. And, and those are great for laying in bed. Like you said, volume down podcasts on just kind of like puzzle games. Those are fun. Do you ever hear the witness? No. Who's guilty? Can I get a witness? It's it's a puzzle game. It's on like P- PS4 and everything. No, I also got Octopath Traveler. Have you heard about that? The JRPG. Mm-mm. It's a uh, it's kind of it's kind of old school where it's like sprite based, but it's got a very unique it's got a unique aesthetic to it. But um, it looks great. It's gotten really great reviews, and um, you know it's oh they're gonna fuck baby. Are they? They're, is it all gonna be off screen? Probably. How, oh, this is the first movie to ever show a paraplegic having sex. To see, fucking, he was breaking ground with this great ass movie. Yeah, and that's how he's he's lucky his cock still works. That's how boring this movie is, man. We started talking about retro rampage type shit. This movie sucks. We, we talk about other shit on every movie. Oh, he's sucking the titties though. Suck them tits. <laughs> is that really giving her all the pleasure? What is she writing? anything she's loving it what if he could still get a boner but like he couldn't feel it so he could just fuck her all night and never jizz well is it their cases isn't there cases with people in wheelchairs where they are paralyzed but they have feeling in there or they don't have any feeling but they could still have sex with their wives like maybe it still does react yeah if they're lucky sometimes it just nothing works under their wouldn't that be weird if, like, you had to ask your partner, "Did I come yet?" <laughs> you know, she's she's fucking holding on to his fucking harness to get him out of bed. That's hot. <laughs> it's just fucking weird and kinky. <laughs> you think there's a? You tell me, man, Mister uh, Connoisseur of Pornhub. Is there a category all about paraplegics? There are fucking amputee porn, which is awesome. Well, I can imagine like stump fucking and stuff, but is there a paraplegic porn? I've never seen it. I'll have to look. Have you ever watched midget porn? Be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Mac <laughs> used to have a soundbite from a, a midget porn that we played on our. It was on our uh, soundboard that we'd put. It was pretty awesome. It was it was this midget guy going totally awesome, baby. Just totally awesome. Oh. <laughs> We watched it. It was awesome. Somebody sent me a video and I got roped into watching it, but it was a Snow White and the Seven Dwarves porn parody. So she was asleep and they were fucking her. It was it was it was what you pretty much would imagine. It was a gangbang of seven fucking dwarf midgets or whatever. Fucking one chick who was asleep. She had to have been asleep, baby. Maybe. Dude, I don't fucking I didn't take notes. That's hot. No, that's rape. But it's just so weird. He just gave him a jar of piss. So if you haven't been paying attention, this guy's basically a mad scientist, right? And he basically injected tissue from a human brain into a monkey brain, and it made him smarter. And now the, the monkey has a telepathic link to, to the paraplegic guy, which I don't know why. But that's just happening now, an hour and 11 minutes into the movie? No, it's already happened. He's just now, get, he's like upping the dosage because he's getting crazy. Like he wants it. He wants to see how smart he can get it. And it basically backfires. The movie sucks, Zach. It's not going to help. Oh, it's amazing. It's the greatest fucking movie ever made. This movie should have won an Oscar. What's Mac doing right now? I don't know. Probably hanging by his neck in his fucking closet. <laughs> we should call somebody, man. We should prank somebody that we know. 
<laughs> Who do you want to call? Josh James is home. Just call Josh James. But Star, you know, hide it. <laughs> we got to prank him. Let me see if I have his number in here. If you don't, I got it. I do, but go ahead and tell it to me so I can put Star 6 7 before it. And I'll, I'll you better ble- it out. You got to bleep it out. Yeah. Or don't. I don't give a shit. No, I'm just kidding. We won't. Hold up. If, if he's like me, he won't even answer it if he doesn't recognize the number. Okay, I don't either. I don't know. Yeah, all these people that fucking actually answer it blow my mind. <laughs> all right, so his number is... Six... Put it up to the mic. I answer him out of curiosity sometimes. It's only 10 o'clock there. He does work nice now. Well, then he won't answer the phone, but we'll see. Leave him a message. If he has he one, yeah. That annoys me when people don't have answering machines, like a voicemail box. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. So impersonal. Leave something. Is not available. What are you going to say? I don't know. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Threaten him like he owes you money. Like he owes you money. Drug money. Do it. Where the fuck do you get off coming over me over my head like that, motherfucker? If you don't got my money by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill your fucking family, okay? I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna strangle your cock with my fucking throat if you don't got my money. You better have it, motherfucker. I will fucking kill you and him. And that's the bottom line. So I, I will watch the monkey shines right now. Get at me, 7 o'clock, whatever I said. Bye. <laughs> I just realized while I was doing that, if I call the wrong number, I could go to jail now. <laughs> okay, so let's call someone I know that'll fall for it and still answer it. Um, I want you to prank call my little brother. <laughs> okay. My little brother from Missouri. He's like, uh, just to keep in mind, I think he's 16 or 17. So you don't want me to threaten him? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'll clear the air with him after the show if I have to. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. His name is Lane. If you want to work off that, you don't have to, or you could pretend he's somebody else. All right, let's listen. Up to the phone. Hey, is this Lane? What? Is this Lane? Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming up there tomorrow morning around 7 o'clock, and if uh, you don't have my money for me, I'm going to crack your fucking head wide open. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go for it. He's down for it? All right. <laughs> He's like, all right. <laughs> he immediately Man. calls 911. <laughs> All right, I kind of like that uh, theme. Let me see, like people I know. Um, let me see who else I got. That's pretty funny. You know, it'd be really funny. Oh, I don't have her number. I was gonna say you can call my uh, legally blind fucking grandmother. <laughs> you throw your grandma under the bus like that? Oh, it's the one that we don't really like talk to very much. <laughs> Is it the the one with the ghosts? Yeah. She she talks like this. She goes, Gamma don't hear so well anymore. Gamma oh, yeah. don't hear so well. So we won't uh okay, we won't do that. Let's do Dude, did, did he just shoot up? He had the syringe. <laughs> oh, is he jerk Oh, what the fuck's he doing, man? 
Or did he just fall asleep waiting for him to wake? Oh, the, the monkey's biting his cock. What if you woke up to a monkey like, you think you could train the monkey to suck your cock? It probably wouldn't fit in its mouth. It's a little mouth. <laughs> Do you think we could get away with pranking Riverman, dude? <laughs> we could try. Let's see if he would fall for it. Uh, do you know his number? Go ahead and tell me so I can just... Okay, hold up. <laughs> Hopefully he plays ball here. Uh, ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, baby. All right, this is uh. Your call has been forwarded to an automated <sighs> voice message, message system. Yeah. Nine uh. two is not available. Call this motherfucker. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Yeah, listen here. See, I'm gonna be by your house at 3 a.m. If you ain't got my fucking money, I'm gonna fucking shove my cock so far up your fucking ass, it'll come out your cock. You'll be jacking my cock off next time you're laying in bed. Now you call me, or you, or you, you do that shit. Bye. You know, at first that sounded like you were doing your best Sammy Davis Jr. impression. Yeah, I, I'm bad at coming up with voices on the fly. That was kind of fun. Oh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Well, that's kind of a... Look at that. He's a baby. He's like a little baby. She got Casablanca on her wall. Why? She wasn't in that. Oh, <laughs> Josh James just messaged. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> he said, Zach, what the fuck, LOL. What would you have said if I had answered your phone call? The same thing. <laughs> yeah. So at least now I know I didn't get a wrong number and I'm not going to have the cops show up. I just got a fucking anonymous number and he, he threatened me. He said he was going to fucking kill me and my family. <laughs> that was a little dark. Do you know who definitely will answer the phone? Who? I think he will. My my brother Dakota, the one that was doing Retro Rampage with us. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go for it? If you want. All right, we'll try it. This is just an experiment, folks. I don't think I could like continuously keep pranking people like my family and people we know. Uh, but all right, are you ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's kind of he's got a little bit of a toot on him, so we'll see. <laughs> Holy shit! He's talking about a black cock getting sucked. I heard that while I was doing it. Okay, shh, shh. Living, clinging, blood-sucking bitch. <laughs> Come on. Look at his face. Come on. <laughs> oh, she beat the shit out of him. He might be smart in screening his calls. <laughs> that fucking asshole. Your call has been forwarded Damn to an it. automated voice messaging system. Leave a message. Is not available. No. At the tone, he recorded record one and message. didn't say anything. Finish- so this guy is like, he's got a gap in his two bottom teeth. I've never seen that before. You know who else has that exact same gap? Corey Taylor of Slipknot. Oh yeah, I guess I have. Yeah, big neck himself. That fucking guy's neck is as big around as my cock. It's like a tree trunk fucking fucking in between your legs. What would your mom say if she if she got a phone call that was a private number? Would she not answer it? Probably not. <laughs> my mom would fucking answer it. I'm just like on the fence about doing it to my mom. <laughs> She gets super paranoid. All you'd have to do, it'd be funny, is like, I, we're not going to do it. But if you prank call my mom. We should call your brother that has all the sex stories and I can act like, did you fuck my girlfriend? Did you fuck my girlfriend? She she was fucking somebody. She said it was you. 
he would have been the first one I suggested, but he doesn't actually have like a traditional number right now. Oh, yeah, he's like he calls off Wi-Fi and stuff. So we need to get him to call in again and give us some more sex stories. Yeah, I mean, go back and listen to that original like one year anniversary call in show and listen to his sex stories. They're great. <laughs> They're ridiculous. Uh, we can have him on sometime. It'd be pretty funny. Mm-hmm. That would suck being not being able to get out of bed. It'd be cool to not have to fucking go to the toilet. You could just shit on yourself, but everything else would suck. How hot is that fucking water, man? That water looks like it's boiling. <laughs> she looks dead. She just slapped the shit out of her son. She probably she's she's ready to commit suicide. Is that what she's gonna do? Probably. I don't know. She's getting ready to get killed by the monkey. Why was she assaulting her fucking paraplegic son? She's a bitch. He talked back to her. Does she got toothpaste on her face? Or is that the uh, the Vicks Vapor Rub? Yeah, it's fucking weird, man. You ever jack off a Vicks Vapor Rub? Why don't you try and call Josh again just to have him on? Now he knows the jig's up. I think he'll answer. <laughs> I, think, I think your phone just tried to call. No, I, yeah, it's so stupid. I accidentally <laughs> hit Siri. That fuck that monkey, man. He's like Mikey, man. This is where Mikey got all his moves from. This monkey. Remember Mikey? They need to show a shot where the monkey's looking right at the camera and it just goes, Monkey! Hey, so he just said, Hey, there was no caller ID or else I would have answered, LOL. Give him a call. <laughs> now that, let's lift the veil on him. Let's get his quick opinion on this fucking movie. We's doing it, baby. We's doing it. it. We're doing it and doing it and doing it, right? <laughs> this is very psycho. Mother. Now he's like, I didn't really want to talk to you. I was just, I was just saving face. He just implied that he would answer if it wasn't like blocked. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Oh, that liar. Customer you called is not available. Unless the phone the number I got saved is wrong. That's not right, because he had a voicemail last time, bro. Oh, yeah. So, let's go ahead and do it again. I'll just fucking recall him with the number I used. Yeah, you remember which one it was? Uh, The first one, wasn't it? Mm, yeah, it's the f- Might want to bleep yeah. that out, too. Well, I guess you could say f- That's not a big deal. My home address is f- good. I don't get bleeped out. Good story. Domino's, can I help you? <laughs> Josh, <laughs> baby, what you think of this movie we watching? What you think of this scene that's on right now? What you think of that? Oh, shit, you guys are watching Monkey Shines, right? <laughs> yeah. That right? movie sucks, man. <laughs> that movie's <laughs> amazing. Nice. It's horrible. It's the greatest movie ever made, baby. And it's fucking two hours long. Over like, and it's almost two hours long, baby. It's way too long. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I, we're, uh, we're, we're running man, the clock, I, as you say, in the entertainment business. <laughs> but you guys have some uh, hotel workers to harass or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we wanted to pick numbers we knew someone would call, and then you fucked that up. <laughs> we knew people would answer I mean why are you guys bothering me I'm trying to watch the fucking Joe Bob Briggs I'm hell yeah that's Shutter right Man. that's what I'm doing right after this baby just let us know what you think of this movie we'll let you go baby yeah I'll have to uh, I think I data dumped that one I haven't seen it in quite a while it's Ooh. on fucking prime so you can watch it with this episode okay I will I will definitely will man you know I always do alright <laughs> now why don't you pull your cock out and start stroking it uh, I was already doing that man You're interrupting oh. me I told you And next time you fuck your old lady Make her call you Zach uh, Okay Definitely <laughs> Alright we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you later Alright man Bye <laughs> I said that on the Mac and Zach uh, Jason one And he his, his drunken stupor He misquoted me And said next time you're fucking your old lady Call her Zach 
Hey, um, so that was that. That would be confusing. Hold on, just a second. What time is it in? I have an idea. One twenty six seventeen. Don't tell me this. Did you pause it? No, I mean, I'm, I'm. What time is it on the West Coast? Oh no, I'm watching. I'm watching the movie. Fuck. We're currently the same time in the West Coast. Damn it. Um. We need to get fucking Corey Feldman on and just troll him. We could talk about his new album. See, now he's finding out the fucking mastermind, the maniacal plan behind shooting the fucking human brain DNA into the monkey. Mm, hold on. Did you ever see the movie Phenomena by uh fucking... Uh, it's just it's kind of like this. It's a monkey with a straight razor. It's got a uh, what's her name from Blue Lagoon or whatever, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields. I think that's who's in it, and it was directed by Dario Argento, and it's got Donald Pleasance in it. It's about a chick that can talk to fucking insects or something. It's weird. It looks like cum in that syringe. I, I one time I was gonna start a band called Cum Junkies. And that was going to be kind of like the artwork and shit, like cum in a syringe and shooting cum into veins. It'd been awesome. And I had a, I had a song based on Blood Brothers. It's going to go, We're cum junkies. We're cum junkies. Oh, Iron Maiden? <laughs> you did yeah. Iron Maiden Blood Brothers? It was going to be amazing, but it fell through. I couldn't find people that wanted to be in a band called Cum Junkies. Dude, they played Blood Brothers when I saw them in Phoenix last year. That's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. It's a sign. It's a bit of a, an obscure one. That's not a bad album. No, it's a good one. It's their last good one, in my opinion. I mean... You didn't like Matter, Life, and Death? No, it's like they have good songs here and there, but like I can't really listen to any of the albums front to back. I don't like how they, they overblow all the songs. It's as if they calculate how long is, like, how many minutes are on a single CD. And then, like, okay, we're going to go through these songs we already have written that are only, like, three minutes long. And we're going to we're gonna repeat these parts so that it's longer and it fills up the whole disc. And they're, they're big epic tracks, you know, things like Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and stuff like that. They have these, like, 20-minute long interludes where it's just, like, a bass line. And then he'll eventually start talking, narrating some story. That's actually one of the only like really long tracks I like of theirs. No, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Usually their album closers are always a big long song, and they're usually like I skip them, or just stop. You don't skip anything after the last track. You just yeah. Hey, I got a I got a funny call. We should make that's relevant to this. Um, I think we should call a pet store and see if they got any killer monkeys available. Like you should ask them if they they're not gonna have monkeys, right? They're probably not. But you need to call and ask, hey, like I'm looking for a monkey, and uh, and then when they fight back, <laughs> I should just act like I'm the character in this movie because they'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I got in an accident jogging. I got hit by a car. Now I'm a paraplegic. I want a monkey, <laughs> dude. It fucking blew my mind if they did know the movie though. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let me give you the phone number, man. They're open for another fifty minutes. All right, this will be funny. Whenever you're ready. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the number is. It's a store called the in Los Angeles. You might want to bleep that out too. <laughs> All right. Alan. <laughs> Beverly, this is. How can I help you? Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, I, I was in a, you know, I got in a, I, w- I was in a jogging accident a couple months ago, and I, I, I lost control of my legs, and uh-huh. I was wondering if you guys sold, like, a monkey that could tie my shoes and help me out around the house. You actually don't sell any pets here, I'm sorry, man. Oh, you don't sell pets? I thought you were a pet store, baby. Yeah, we just sell pet supplies. Uh, oh, you got some food for the monkey that I get eventually. <laughs> no monkey food, actually. We just focus mainly on, like, dogs and cats. But... All right. You think a dog would be better? <laughs> oh, 
Possibly, <laughs> maybe. I feel like a monkey could do a lot more. The dog probably can't tie a shoe. They have, they have, they have no thumbs. Yeah, you know, the monkeys have the opposable thumbs, so they could definitely tie shoes. So. Yeah. Ask him if he sucks dick. He sounds like he does. <clears throat> what was that? Say it again. I said, ask him, ask him if he sucks dick. It sounds like he does. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks. Uh, I guess I had to, uh, you know, call no someone problem. else, baby. What Have you doing luck. tonight? <laughs> Have a good night and good luck on that. Search for the monkey, too, man. All right, thanks. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> okay, so that wasn't even a fucking legit pet store. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe I fucking do- b- botched that one. Hold on. That's fucking bullshit, man. Uh- <laughs> they had no monkeys. You-, you think he hung up and went up to his co-workers like, you got to hear this guy that just called. He wants a monkey to tie his shoes and shit. Fucking the <laughs> man. It-, it was a lot like that fucking movie, uh, George Romero, the great movie he made years ago. Very underrated. Look, look at the monkey with the syringe. That's a scary image. I always thought the cover of this movie was scary as a kid, even though it's like a toy monkey on the cover. Yeah, the the cover looks more alluring than actually what's inside the contents. See, I think that's your problem. You don't think this movie's great because you're actually confusing it with Chakra, the other baboon killer movie. Dude, how come all these pet stores are just like pet supplies, dude? Yeah. Hold on. This is dog shit, man. Pet store. There's They always have pet stores in malls. I was just at a pet store not long ago. They had a husky, and I wanted them, baby. Mm. That's like my dream dog, a husky. They're always like, you go to a pet shop, they always have, like, if they have a husky, it's like $1,000. And they're like, yeah, we put a little chip in it, so if he ever gets lost, we can track him. It's like, God, can you take that out and give it to me cheaper? I'll find him the old-fashioned way. Mm. Look at him, he's stoned as fuck. He got hit with that shit. What the fuck, I'm looking at these places here. Um. <laughs> Puppies in love. Puppies in love? Shake us be in love? They're fucking closed. I'm very disappointed by all this, man. That fucking ass. Why don't you ask him if he sucked dick like I asked you to? <laughs> Cause that's not nice. <laughs> he was not. He was. A, he was. He was being an all right sport. <laughs> you should have tested it further. <laughs> how, how good it was. Do you think he even heard me? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if he even heard you, man. I made you be quiet for like a minute because he's like, "Hey, what was that?" Like you were. You must have just been blank. Like, you know, you weren't talking to him for. <laughs> Imagine how weird that awkward silence was for him. Like, should I hang up now? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I took my earphones off so I didn't hear you laugh. So, because I didn't want to laugh. Oh, okay. And then I heard you say something. Well, what sucks here is is most pet stores are now closed, no matter where in the country we call. That's a bummer. Mm. I wonder if I wonder if you can call the zoos. <laughs> Do they have phone numbers? You just take one of the monkeys out of the zoo. Maybe take one of the the children of the monkeys you have in captivity and give them to me. I could train them myself. <laughs> I don't know if that's against any laws or regulations, but you should totally do that. I'd give you some money. Do you think those guys ever get really fucking fed up of blowing into those things to move their chairs? It'd probably... You'd probably get locked jaw at some point. If you're traveling a lot, especially. Yeah, can you imagine if you got like blow it for a long ass time? This is the heartbreaking conclusion. Is it really? He acts like he loves the monkey. He gives the monkey hope. Look at the monkey's eyes. He's like, oh, love. The first time I'm seeing love for the first time. He's giving me my treat. He loves me. I don't understand, though. So they have a psychic bond. But who's... When the monkey's killing people, is he? did he kill his mother because he sensed he was angry at his mother? I think so, yeah. So it's the people that piss him off, and they have a link, and he sees the deaths while he's sleeping or something, if I remember right. And so he's killing the monkey because he thinks it's the right thing to do because this monkey's bad news. 
Yeah. And really, the bad guy is the guy that was fucking jerking off. And technically, the monkey, the the monkey's kind of uh, like basically he has to kill the monkey, or he'll probably never get out of this alive because mm. he just killed like his mom, and like the phone lines have been cut and shit. The monkey knows how the phone works. That's a smart monkey. <laughs> what happened to the guy that uh, caused this whole mess? Did he die? I miss that. He came with a syringe, and the monkey got- Is he jacking off? Yeah, he's going to shoot it in his hand and then throw it in his face. Wouldn't that be funny <laughs> if I just cut to his face and you saw it splat in his face? <laughs> Look at him. He's giving him the sexy lip. Like, oh, yeah. I'll suck your dick. Is this the guy? He kind of looks like the guy that's also in the Truman Show. Uh, like the friend or something? Yeah. That guy was chubbier, I think, unless he gained weight. Well, it was also a few years later, too. It was like 10 years later. I'm going to see what else this guy's been in. Apparently, this was his first movie. Like, he was, he only done, like, theater before this. And I guess his manager told him to not bring it up that he's never, he's not, like, very, uh, used to doing movies because they figured that with a loss of, apparently, he was in a movie right after this. That was big. Uh, he does a lot of. He's he's done a lot of work. It's I'm looking at right here. He's on a show right now called Chicago PD. He's a star. You think he loans for the that fucking Oscar worthy movie that started his career? GI <laughs> Jane, Californication, uh, Thelma and Louise, Monkey Shines, of course. The next three days, Home Alone Four. Um, Home Alone Four. Was he one of the fucking bootleg robbers? <laughs> I doubt it. Um, the dad or something. Chicago PD's Jason. This guy is being investigated by NBC for inappropriate behavior amid sexual harassment claims. Oh man, a Me Too thing. Oh, See, man. he probably was just trying to get her to fucking help him out because he's a fucking paraplegic, and they just took it the wrong way. He only likes monkeys, man. They should know better. He's not after those giants. <laughs> so when's he killing the monkey? I want this to hurry up and happen. <laughs> Any second now. Like he's just going to snap his little neck? Yeah, with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> How did this movie not win an Oscar just for that? <laughs> See, if I was a, a, the head of like the Oscar nominees, I would totally troll and do shit like that. Fucking monkey shines for killing with the mouth. If they have a psychic link, how does the monkey not know he's going to kill him? I don't know. That's my only problem. And if the and also f furthermore, if the monkey knows that in his heart he wants to kill the monkey, wouldn't the monkey just commit suicide then? I don't remember exactly how it happened. Maybe he he, he he's got to clear his mind so that the monkey can't read it, baby. Why is he putting cookies in his mouth and he keeps spitting them out? I'm confused. He's not. I don't think he notices them spit it out. But why is he spitting them out? Is the monkey trying to kill him? No, it's just, it's trying to protect him and feed him, I think. But why is he spitting it out? I don't know, he's not hungry, I guess. He See, the monkey's like, I'm love, finally, that's all I needed, I'm not gonna kill again. I'm never gonna hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then he kills him. Wouldn't that be funny if that was his inner monologue? <laughs> what is he like, saying into, yeah. <laughs> I think he's trying to make it the monkey fall asleep or something. Or get up close to him so he could bite it. Yeah, what's he doing? He's like channeling him. What the fuck? He fell asleep? Or is he trying to... Oh, is he just trying to lure him close to him? Yeah. What's going on? I'm really confused now. Why are we underwater all of a sudden? Is that his psyche? Underwater? This is uh outside. It's raining. Oh, he's having a dream. So he fell asleep, so the monkey's probably doing something again. Because that's when he goes and does it, baby. You told me he was about to kill him, though. You lied to me. I, I thought it, this was the end, but it looks like there's a couple more minutes. Twelve more minutes. <sighs> the van, baby. Is this the chick? It's Kool-Aid. Uh-oh. Is he telling the monkey to go away? She's like, I want you to fuck me on your bed again with that harness. Now I'm going to get in the harness and let it lower me onto your cock. I'm pretty sure that's the chick from Full House. I'm going to double check, though. She was in one episode. She kind of looks like Jenny from fucking Friday 13th, too, but it's not. She has a, a similar look, though. 
So why would the monkey kill her? Because he doesn't. He's not angry at the girl. I thought you said that. That Maybe was. His, now or is the, the monkey, monkey jealous? Is the monkey just jealous and wants to kill everybody that he wants to be close to besides the monkey? Yeah, maybe. Hmm. The monkey's like, I want you to fuck me and only me. <laughs> she can't fuck you like I can fuck you. What if he was just like sleeping? He's like, you just break my window, bitch. You're gonna pay for that. Shit. I'm looking at this. Um. Do 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 do. Oh yeah, you can look up uh, questions if we got some too. Yeah, I guess I can. Oh, oh, I will do that. Yeah, but I'm actually looking to see. Oh, she's in Sudden Death, the Jean Claude Van Damme movie. That's right. Sudden Death. But I'm looking for Full House. Is Sudden Death the hockey rink one or? Yeah, it's Die Hard in a hockey rink. That's all it is. There's a new Die Hard in a skyscraper coming out. Yeah. It's Die Hard in a building, just like Die Hard. <laughs> and the poster is just Die Hard. What if that spawns a couple sequels now? Yeah, I don't know. She was on an episode of Quantum Leap, that's right. Okay, I don't see Full House here. I think it's safe to say if it gets a sequel, the second one will be on a plane. Skyscraper-er. Mm -hmm. Dumb and Dumber-er. What do you think's better, Dumb and Dumber 2 or Dumb and Dumber-er? Oh, man, she is, she's fucking ate it. <laughs> that's like, uh... Kathy Bates and fucking misery. Yeah, dude. Um, does she die? And that's why he kills the monkey. I think she is dead. If I remember it, maybe not. And you gotta kill the monkey to get revenge. It's it's actually a rape revenge movie. Zach revenge. What the fuck? You see that little monkey hand with a match? <laughs> Ella, don't fucking kill my my ice cream. What the fuck? It is a bit of a predicament when you uh. You know, like, <laughs> look at this cute little monkey in. You kind of want him to get it struck. It's like, come on, man. I want you to succeed, buddy. <laughs> He's going to die. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it funny to watch monkeys do shit? <laughs> that was a big genre in the, like, 50s. They used to make movies completely with monkeys and, like, Dogs. Oh, now he's lighting her hair. That's smart. <laughs> Stop it! Oh. <laughs> Why is he attacking him, though? He's threatened, baby. He just pissed all over him. <laughs> the monkey pee on me. I think this is where he does it. Yeah. Oh, man. He just called that monkey slime what an asshole. He's just trying to help. I'm just. I'm actually tense. I'm... Uh, I'm tensing up. I'm tensing up. See, this movie's really effective. His teeth do look like a vampire's. Yeah, he's got fangs. <laughs> it looks like the monkey teeth. He gets intentional. <laughs> he's becoming one with a monkey. Maybe. He's got monkey teeth. How does it happen? How does he get his fucking jaws around that monkey? Let me see. It's, it's fucking hilarious, the scene. He just bites down and starts moving his fucking neck. All over the place. It's amazing. No, no, no. The fucking syringe. Oh. See, how'd they shoot that, baby? No. <laughs> this little monkey with the syringe. And he's got cum in the syringe. <laughs> See, the whole movie should have been this. Maybe she jacked him off while he's sleeping and put his semen in there. She wants to get the chick pregnant. So she's trying to shoot his jizz into her veins. You'll breed well. <laughs> You'll breed well. That should be a sound bite. Dude, this is fucked up. Looking at this fucking monkey do this, man, is weird. It's amazing. What? No, no, no. What's he getting hand strength all of a sudden? I guess he's a, he's in a predicament. Oh god! He's fighting the strength. <laughs> right to her cheek. They need to play the Superman theme now that he's getting strength. Why is he just, like, teasing her? Why is he just, like, poking her in little places? <laughs> you know? He's giving her Botox. <laughs> this is it, baby. We go to see a monkey oh. get his throat broken with, with, his, with his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucked up. 
Imagine the last thing passing through a monkey's mind when he's getting his throat broken by somebody's mouth. Like, holy fuck, I didn't see this coming. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see this coming. Look, why is that needle all bent? It's probably a fake one. <laughs> so the music calms him down? Yeah. That's all. Come on, bud. This is fucked up. That's so funny because you always you you would wonder it's like how the fuck is he gonna kill this monkey when he can't move anything but his mouth? <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> the poor monkey. He's just like, what's <laughs> happening here? Wow! I loved you. Why are you fighting me though? <laughs> 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 this is the stupidest fucking thing. Ever That's seen. amazing. <laughs> it's like a cat now. Oh, the poor monkey. Is he gonna get up and go? No fair. No fair. No fair. <laughs> and then just walks off, and it's over. Sanyo. That's a cheap brand. That poor. Monkey. How did he kill it though? Did he really break his neck? You think he broke his neck? Dude. I guess that's what all the, the thrashing about. Oh, is this uh Metal Gear Solid all of a sudden? You gonna look down and fucking they're gonna be like staring at you and shit. I still haven't beaten that by the way. I need to play it again. I'm talking about the first one, but yeah, you gotta beat the fifth one, motherfucker. Yeah, I gotta I just stopped, but I need to pick it up again. You're a fuck up. Maybe I should play it tonight. Hey, it's this guy again. You're not that far from the end. Okay. Don't tell me, man. And the end is gonna... I can't wait to hear your thoughts. That's supposed to be skin? They they put, like, a thing over it. What the fuck? That actually scared me. <laughs> that was like Alien for monkeys. <laughs> that made no fucking sense. See, this movie's great. This movie's great. You just don't remember. You didn't remember it right. The last five minutes is kind of entertaining. Out of two hours. See, I wonder if like Romero's cut was shorter or longer. This movie needs to be a lot shorter. This movie needs to be about an hour and 20 minutes, man. It definitely it, it takes place mostly in a room, so it definitely doesn't need to be almost two hours. So the girl did die. No, that was her that he's talking to. Okay. Okay. Say it's me that you adore for now and evermore. So there was no investigation on how the mom died? They just they just took his word for it that the monkey did it? The monkey did it. He was a fucking smart monkey. He had human brain tissue injected into him. I keep calling it a him, but it's a her in the movie. Is it really a her? But it's a boy monkey playing it. A monkey named Boo. So why did it have to be a girl in the story, though? I don't know. Was the monkey in love with him? Maybe. Let me go ahead and uh, pull up some comments. That was a good point. We got This movie's winding down here. Thank the Lord. Um, oh, this movie's great. Greatest movie ever made. Should have got Riverman involved. Hmm. River Man, he's been a little MIA from the podcast scene. Oh, uh, the movie's over, baby. And the monkey, he didn't live. The monkey should have lived. That was a good monkey. He just wanted love. And right when he got it, the motherfucker breaks his neck with his teeth. You don't see that every day. Okay, so we have some uh, we have some comments on the retro rampage. I'll hold off till we do that next. Um, let's go for, there's some, actually some funny comments on the retro rampage, but I'll address those then. Uh, Adrian Mendoza, you commented on desert heat commentary. Uh, you say hilarious commentary. Thank you. Zach brings up the film schizophrenia, the whore mangler in this commentary. Like, Oh, <laughs> uh, holy shit. The, that's where the fucking schizophrenic lore began. <laughs> um, gamer guys reviews. We already read this. Didn't we, that you guys took my suggestions. Jason lives. Thanks. Um, Oh, I don't know if we read... No, we wouldn't have read that, I don't think. Yeah, we didn't. I don't think. We didn't. Okay, so yeah, Gamer Guys Reviews, we did. 
and that commentary turned out pretty well. Hopefully you checked it out. Um, and that was commented on the Are You Afraid of the Dark to Tale of the Frozen Ghost commentary where we mentioned that we did the Jason movie. Uh, <laughs> on the Are You Afraid of the Dark, that same commentary, Tale of the Frozen Ghost, we had a new commenter called Park Avenue. He basically just says, this was a proper waste of 39 minutes. Now, Exactly. That's, that's what we do here. Come back next week. We'll waste your time again. See, we don't know if that was a, a negative. Yeah. Because he said proper. Now, was he, it, it's all context. And it's how he says it. Maybe he's like from the UK and they just add the word proper to everything. So was You're he a like proper fuckhead? Might was he like was he? Did he mean it in a good way? Like that was a proper that was a proper waste of thirty nine minutes. Like that was the way to waste time if you have to. Or was he saying, look, that was a proper waste of my fucking time, and you guys owe me. <laughs> Regardless, I liked the comment. Yeah, thank you so much for listening or giving it a shot, Park Avenue. Hopefully that in, insinuates that you listen to the whole thing if mm-hmm. you're saying all 39 minutes were, were wasted. So that's appreciated. Um, Oliver Close Off. He's been commenting a lot lately. <laughs> Oliver Close Off. That sounds like one of your things on your prank call, man. Yeah. Yeah. Norma Stitz. I'm waiting for her to comment. Adolf Oliver Nipple. <laughs> Oliver close off on the uh, same Are You Afraid of the Dark commentary. He uh, meant, he says, better hope Anthony Weiner isn't listening. I don't get it. Anthony Weiner. I know he was into like underage girls and I think you were making cracks about Melissa Joan Hart. That's probably it. Yeah. Something like that. Um, his maybe, last name's Weiner. Yeah, no, it's fucking weird. His, uh, his sex, sexed images were cringy. I never seen him. <laughs> his, him with his shirt off and his cock. Really? You can see it? Uh, I don't know. if I got to see them now. It's blurred off. I'd go digging for it. On the Friday the 13th Part 6 commentary that we did, um, Gamer Guys Reviews also states again, Again, thanks for doing Part 6, my favorite installment. Uh, to answer your question about why Kane ended up playing Jason the longest, according to CJ Graham, the guy that plays Jason in this one, he was supposed to return as Jason for part seven, but because the director of that one had worked with Kane before on some other film, he decided to hire him rather than bring back Graham. And I guess because of how well that went in part seven, Paramount and New Line brought him back for the three other sequels. What is the, um, what's the movie that he's referring to that Kane Hodder worked with uh, the director of part uh, seven? John Carl Beekler, um, he's a stunt guy, so he probably did a bunch of stunts, yeah. Okay, something like that. Maybe, uh, uh, I think he did House 4. I think John Carl Beekler and maybe, not sure though, could be wrong. Appreciate it, Gamer Guys Reviews, we were happy to do that. Uh, feel free, everybody, to keep throwing out suggestions, and we'll definitely uh, get around to those. Uh, happy to do it. Um, MGTOW is freedom. I don't know what that, that's... That's the name. MGTOW is freedom. MGTOW? MGTOW is freedom. <laughs> that is the. Isn't uh, that the guys that, like, I don't need to fuck no chicks? Fuck chicks. I'll be celibate my whole life. I'm not sure. I, think. I could be wrong, though. If I'm wrong, sorry, guy. <laughs> Mig- Maybe it's MGTOW. MGTOW is freedom comments. Monkey shines now. Awesome. Well. <laughs> You ask and you shall receive. And same thing goes to Oliver Closeoff again. He also commented, do monkey shines. Monkey shines. And you guys, once again, hope you enjoyed it. We did monkey shines. We suffered through it. I think we could like we could th- we could hang the hat up now. We've fulfilled the prophecy. <laughs> We've done the greatest movie ever made. Josh James, these were all comments on Friday, Friday six, by the way. Um, Josh James also commented on the Friday six. He says, been waiting a while for you guys to do this one. Thank you. Um, it was fun to do it. Hell yeah. We had a, a, a new commenter by the name of Jay Hill. He commented on uh, my original Philip and Selmo interview um, that I did, not the one that Pat did. And he goes, I agree with what Phil says about Evil Dead. Never cared for the others, but the first one is a classic. I'm a sucker for the second one. That's my favorite. The first or the second one? First. The first one's one great. I love movies. the f- I love the first one, but I, I am a sucker for the second one because it was the first one I saw, and I we sort of on a whim bought the VHS. I saw it at a shop or something, and I'd never heard of the first Evil Dead or anything, and I just saw this the skull cover with the eyeballs, and it was just one of those movies where I, I picked it up based on the cover, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was the first one I ever saw, so I have a particular attachment to it. But I love the first two. 
Um, we still need to do like a, a our top like ten favorite movies of all time. Somebody asked us one time. We said we'd do it on the next episode, and we never did. Okay, so we'll prepare that. Um, we'll prepare that for the next one. Don't let us forget, and we'll do that. I'd have to think about it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do it on a whim, but we'll 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 get around to that for sure. Um, just bring it up, and we'll we'll do it. Um, also on the Friday Thirteenth Part Six commentary, Robert Chardello commented, "I saw this one at the drive-in back in 1986. That's awesome. Back in the days when drive-ins were a thing. We actually have a drive-in here, Zach, in the Phoenix area in Glendale. Um, but that might be the only one. There's a couple around me." He goes on to say, I saw a lot of the drive-in back in the day. I saw A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Police Academy 2, Friday the 13th, Part 5, and Jaws the Revenge. I miss those days. Jaws the Revenge, where the fucking shark follows them to another state. <laughs> That's fucking great. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, a commenter by the name of D.A., just simply D.A., uh, they commented on... The Philip and Selma interview that Pat, you guys all remember Pat, he did the Walking Dead commentaries with us. Um, the interview he did with Philip and Selma, he comments, DA, great interview. An hour went by very fast. My By this time, Phil and the Illegals have released Choosing Mental Illness as a Virtue, and Vinnie Paul has passed away. Just sat down to watch some interviews. Very nice interview, and that new album is a masterpiece. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And, and that is a very, very long interview, so I, I think it's really cool when people actually sit through it. The whole thing. And, um, oh, sorry, not to move too past Friday 13th, part six. Uh, Joey Wilkerson commented on Jason Lives. It's about time with exclamation points. It is about time. We wanted to do it. We just didn't get around. I mean, I just couldn't get the ball in a hole. I mean, I wanted to, but I just couldn't do it. I watched that two days ago. I watched that two days ago. It was on. <laughs> he said it is about time. I thought that was what. It- I was going to do that, and I couldn't really make it work. I want to do it. I just couldn't do it. But then Zach comes in and makes it work, and he does it flawlessly. <laughs> you wish you well, had my you. skills at making shit work. Thanks, everybody, for uh, dropping them comments. Uh, hopefully, all you guys that are commenting all the time are also checking us out on iTunes. If you have not yet, anybody that's uh, on the YouTubes, please click the iTunes links that we throw on under all the videos in the descriptions. Go over there. Check out the versions we throw up on on the podcast. You know, not just iTunes, but also Google Play and Stitcher and things like that. Um, check out the versions over there. Uh, they're they're better. Uh, we can get away with a lot more copyright wise. Uh, Google, Google and their fucking YouTube. They're kind of Nazis over here. Um, and we can just have more liberties and have more fun with the editing process. So check us out over there. Let us know if you how you like that. And while you're over there, please leave reviews, uh, five star ratings if you think we deserve it. Uh, a nice sentence or something, just giving us a review, something nice or something ugly. I don't really care. Um, all news is good news, as they say. Uh, but those reviews over there on things like Stitcher, Google Play, and iTunes, please comment over there, rate over there. That stuff will help us. Um, gain notoriety and rise above the 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 charts over there the podcast charts we want to gain exposure and grow uh also check out magazine x save the world i think i mentioned it earlier you guys just did a jason x for friday 13th Mm -hmm. yeah go check that out they don't do a whole lot talking about that movie i don't blame them it's 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 entertaining but they just kind of go off into a million different directions on that one yeah and it is a drunken one right Mm mm-hmm and we called our friend who was shooting a commercial, and he's going to put a Mac and Zach subliminal message in the commercial. He said, <laughs> I, so, somehow I doubt he does. Yeah. We'll check that out. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'll also tell you, if you guys are into Mac and Zach Save the World and all that other stuff, feel free if you guys head over to iTunes, if that's your poison, to uh, you can simply follow the Revival House feed we have over on, on iTunes, and it just it's an amalgam of all of our shows. And uh, so it's all of these, the BTM, it's it's Mac and Zach Save the World, it's everything we do, and every Friday Zach drops a uh, what we would call a revival classic, mm-hmm. and he uh, pulls d- deep from the archive and reposts something, so there's always shit going down over there. But that's really all we got, man. Also follow us on social media, we're, we're everywhere you want to be. We're like fucking MasterCard or Visa or whatever slogan that was back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Instagram is at the Rev House. Follow us over there. Facebook is Revival House. Uh, Instagram. 
I, th- I think oh, I think uh, Facebook is Rev House too. I think Revival House was taken. We're gonna have to give somebody some money to get that fucking name. Yeah, maybe eventually. But find us. Uh, we're everywhere. Send us messages, man. You guys want requests? You can you can message us any of those different places. Send Zach some dank memes, as he puts it. Uh, your best revival memes and and submit them to Zach. Uh, I think that's. It's really all we got, man. You got anything else you want to say? I got nothing. All right, guys. We'll we'll catch you guys later. Thank you for suffering along with us to Monkey Shines. Uh, we look forward to doing a much better movie next time. I'm Aaron. I'm Zach. And you guys have been wonderful. Bye-bye, puppets. I gotta stop for a second, man. My, I just got a text. You fuck up. My boss just messaged me, man. Hold on. All right, I, I rewound to six twenty six. My my audio has already stopped twice too. Separate note. I'm just I'm just letting it roll on this movie. Fuck your fucking audio. I'd beat the shit out of your fucking audio if it was a person. You said six twenty six is what we're at. We're looking at Tucci's face. Yeah, looking all hot, like he's gonna fucking just jizz in, in your face. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to try and just uh, engage with him if, while we record. All right, so let's do it again. Ready? I'll pick up. Three, two, one, play. <laughs>